Recently, friends, I visited Atlanta, Georgia. We stayed downtown Atlanta at home to Suites by Hilton, and it was a pretty nice hotel. It was about a five-minute walk from Olympics um, Centennial Park, and um, let's just get into the video. So I put that um, smart water video there because these people hand painted that um for in about eight hours anyway we are in the lobby of the hotel it's um a very nice hotel they have a continental breakfast that they serve in the morning there is coffee and then right where that thing's closed off is where they have the breakfast and then there's seating so then let's dive right into the hotel room so there's like a little kitchenette there there's nowhere to cook like with a hot plate or something like that but there is a microwave and refrigerator and things of the sort so this hotel was like maybe a three to four minute walk from olympic centennial park and that's where you want to kind of like plan your stay is around that park area because um as you will see coming up in this video all of the tourist attractions is right around in this area they have a thing called 360 on this side of the park and i didn't get on it but it um circles in the 360 of course and the downtown area on the side where this hilton hotel is located and um it was probably something i should have looked into but anyway so going when you're downtown there's not many places to eat they got some mom and pop shops there and not a lot of fast food there was a ihop and a margaritaville um right on either side of that ferris wheel there at this hotel they did have some amenities and a rooftop deck was one of them i didn't see a pool there but this place you could um use you didn't have to rent it out you could just use it for barbecues and things like that if you want to have some kind of outing and that's a view of downtown atlanta And then about 20 to 30 people, I believe, could fit on this rooftop at once. And then we're off to the gym. So they did have a gym on the ground floor. You could do laundry there in that same area. So you can sweat it out and wash it out all at the same time. And I believe it was around three or four bucks or so to use the washer and the dryer each. And I often tell myself when I'm on vacation, I really do need to start working out. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but I am going to continue to work on that. Okay, so now we're going to leave the gym and get out into the Centennial Olympic Park. And again, the park is so beautiful. The kids can run through the waterfall there. And in this area, the uh, tourist attractions are right there in the distance, as you can see. And right behind me was the um, Margaritaville and the Waffle House. Again, like I said, there wasn't many places down there to eat, especially as far as chain restaurants or a fast food shop. But um, they had enough to at least get you. So I tried to scan the area for some of the hotels that was there. Of course, there was a Hilton, there was an NBC Suites, there was a Jewelry Inn, I believe. But again, like I said, when you're looking for hotels in Atlanta downtown, you want to have it in proximity of this park because that's where all the attractions are. And of course, this park is dedicated to the 1996 Olympics that they had in 
Atlanta, Georgia in um, 1996. So on one side of the park, there's all of these uh, tributes to the Olympics and the Olympians and memorials there. And then on the other side of the park, there's this like huge just sitting area where you guys can do picnics and things like that in the park. And then toward the back of the park, as you're going to see here in a second, there was a playground and a pavilion and things like that. So the park is very, very busy, but there was a lot of room for everybody to spread out and do your own thing. And another look at some of those hotels and all of the green space and the pavilions and there's the playground And that rock-like material was that spongy stuff that they usually have on um, playground. So when kids fall, they won't get hurt or hurt too bad. So now when you go into this Pemberton place, that's where you're going to find the Coca-Cola thing and um, the aquarium. So we did purchase a city pass. It is the best way to um, get the best value for the attractions. They usually have about six attractions and this will get you into five. And then you just pick the lesser one to just pay to get into that one. But you can see all of the attractions that they have there, the aquarium, the football hall of fame, the uh, human rights and... Uh, Civil and Human Rights Museum, I believe. It is. But the highlight of this area, or one of the highlights of this area, is the Coca Cola factory. And believe it or not, it is very interesting to be here. And um, if you get a chance to get to Atlanta, I would definitely suggest doing it. So then, of course, we all gather in this room. This lady gives you a little bit of Riley, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and we are getting started. Now, as you get settled, my name is Charlie, and I welcome you all here to the loft, a.k.a. the room that Riley is sitting in. Now, this is where you can see the wonders. If you look around, you'll find that we call it that because this room holds over 127 years' worth of Coca-Cola artifacts and merchandise from all around the world. My personal favorite piece is, if we turn to the corner, the giant bottle cap opener. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is not its full size. Originally, it was over 18 to 20 feet. So they did show a little movie that you couldn't record, but then after the movie is over, the screen lets up and then it gets you right into the lobby of the Coca-Cola Museum in Pakistan. And this place was huge. There's a lot to explore here for both kids and adults alike. And of course in here you learn about all of the Coca-Cola products there were things for you to interact with. There was games to play with. Um, there, there was just many things to do in there. I was pretty impressed with what Coca-Cola had to offer inside of this facility.
And here's one of those interactive things that um, you could do. I would believe they were like trying to catch the carbonated bubbles. And that was, of course, the Missouri bottle. A lot of memorabilia from Coca-Cola again in this factory. Of course, what else would be there? Another game that you can play. So we went into the vault and apparently the alarm that's on this vault that holds their um, secret to Coca-Cola is actually active. And you'll see a glimpse of this lady. She sets it off and it turns red in the video coming up here soon. And I don't know if English was her first language or not, but the guy kept telling her to step up and she kept stepping back, setting off the alarm. And that's the alarm being set off. So they had a 3D theater. We didn't go in to see what it was about because the showing was a quite a bit of time away. So if you guys seen it before, comment in below and let me know if it was worth it or not to go see when I go back to Atlanta. So right here is where you could take a picture with the Coca-Cola bear. He wasn't out at the time, but we would have did it if he was there. And that was free. And then there was, of course, like I said, a lot of things to interact with. A lot of the smells, a lot of the smells from soda. And I guess a lot of the smells from what Coca-Cola um, Coca um, deals with in their company. And let's just say all the smells didn't smell good. It wasn't a funky smell, but the, all of the smells didn't smell good. So taste it. This was, I think, the best part of the two was taste it. So that soda tastes like that. Santa grape actually tastes like barbecue sauce. And it, 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 yeah, it's unbelievable. So now we're out and we're going to the Human and Civil or the Civil and Human Rights Museum. Now this room, this museum, they're actually building uh, in addition to, it's a pretty small museum, but again, there's a lot of things in the museum that you can interact with, and oftentimes, people go to museums and you think, oh, I just don't want to just look at things, and I think that's why a lot of places are getting that interaction uh, element to their facilities because it gets you involved or immersed in the history. So now we are back outside and you're getting the look from that touristy area uh, of that Centennial Park in uh, Pemberton Park. And it, the aquarium is right across from there. So all of these museums and attractions are in walking distance from one another. And right adjacent to this aquarium is the Football Hall of Fame. So you can do all four of these things in a day, to be honest, and um, have a good time. And especially if you start in the morning when they open, you can take your leisurely time doing so.
and again, I believe that pass was somewhere around like $104 to go to five attractions. And four of those attractions were right there in that area that you could walk to. And you could have the pass for nine days. So you didn't have to use the pass in um, all in one day. So this blue whale was phenomenal. And you'll get to see him from the top of the aquarium. I'm telling you, this place is not to be missed. It is huge. Um, it's unlike any of the aquarium that I've been to. I'm going to try not to animal you guys to death. I know how you can easily bore. So we are going to show, uh, of course, a little bit more fish in some of the animals that were there. And again, this place had things for you to interact with as well. So um, it kept you as an adult or kids engaged as you go along through the aquarium. And of course, when you're in places like this, there's always some educational pieces that you can learn from. And the manta rays were there. the whale shark again. There's just something about watching fish swim that is so relaxing. So if you're not that big into meditation, just try watching fish in a small aquarium or something. I mean, it's relaxation beyond. This guy was pretty cool. And these little guys were precious. So they had an assortment of animals there. Like all of the um, animals weren't um, fish or lived in the ocean and or sea or river or things like that. Um, some of the animals were birds and alligators and things like that. So don't adjust your screens. We are watching these fish that actually light up. They're like flash bulb fish. They were the coolest thing I thought in the aquarium. So now we're back outside and as you can see it was morning before and it is nighttime now and I'm just giving you an area view where if you can pause and kind of go in on the hotels you can see which ones were around so we did venture into midtown i believe this was buckhead and this seafood boil place was actually pretty good they were had many things that were entertaining these were the um seafood egg rolls with that hot um sauce it, it, uh, sweet and honey sauce or whatever it is that was really good. So this was the actual thing that I have. They had a very extensive menu. There's, they serve more than seafood. They had chicken fingers, um, of course, fried chicken, grilled chicken, and things of the sort. It is not a spot to miss. And then, of course, if you want to be entertained, I love a good drag show, and Lips never, never seems to disappoint. This was bottomless mimosas. It was a front show. It was bottomless mimosas. And a brush, which was included for your ticket. And I believe it was forty dollars a person somewhere around there. It, it wasn't that expensive. And this I believe is off one of the highways, but I believe it was also in Midtown. A lot of the entertaining things that we went to was in Midtown and each ride was somewhere around a twenty dollar shared ride each way.
And of course, I couldn't play the original music that they were dancing to because, of course, it was all copyright. But she was singing to You Better Work, Bitch by Britney Spears. So at this show, the Queens believe that they did five performances and they all are very, very awesome at what they do. It was very entertaining. A lot of bachelorette photos um, and things that of people that were there. And of course, we were seated right where they stopped to perform. So it, we had a really good spot. So it, it was, yeah, I, I enjoyed it very much. And she was singing to Dolly Parton's Jolene. And here's a look at the food. I'm sorry, I was very hungry, but um, you know, it was a very, very tasty. I got the chicken and waffles with a side of it. And then this was the final number. And then she took us to church here. It was a very interactive moment. As you can see, we all have tambourines. And this was really just jamming out to this one. And then there's sure all of the queens with the host. The queens actually um, are the waitresses as well. So you get we to meet some of them close to um, up personal. And Meet Your Maker was our waitress. So um, give her a shout out when you get there. So we did go to Piedmont Park. We were there for um, the Juneteenth celebration. So what better place to spend um, the last day of Juneteenth, but at Piedmont Park at a celebration. And my video went to this uh, festival in justice because there were so many parts to it. And even though I really, really, really love to share with you guys, I like to take in all of these oh. things that I do for myself firsthand and not through my camera as much. But I try to definitely give you bits and pieces of what's going on. It looks like the festival, there wasn't a lot of people there, but there really were. Um, the sun was just really hot that day. A lot of folk were just under the shaded trees right behind me. And while we were there, we did support the local economy and bought dinner from one of our lunch from one of the food venues that was there. And um, my friend also purchased some items. And then, of course, these are a lot of the people that lost their lives um, senselessly to violence. And that was my trip to Atlanta. You guys made it to the end. If you got anything from this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And see you next time.